Remember near the end of Cosmos, the great Carl Sagan says this, we are the local embodiment of a cosmos grown to self-awareness. We have begun to contemplate our origin. We are star stuff pondering the stars. What a beautiful gift science has given us. It was astrophysicists who were the ones to be able to tell the chemists how those atoms came into being. Science feeds one, uh, one discipline to the next. Now when I'm working with kids, I can sing a new song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, now I know just what you are, making atoms in your core, helium and many more. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, now I know just what you are. And the knowledge does not diminish the wonder. There are people who think that the only way you get spirituality or wonder and awe is in the mystery. Well, the more that science discovers, the more mystery we discover as well, but that doesn't mean we neglect the known. For me, my pr principal religious response to the universe is based on what's known, what's become factual, evidential understanding. There's plenty there to go wow about. Because what goes on in stars? There are scientists who can go through all the mathematical, thermodynamic, chemical equations and know that. I cannot. But it's so much beyond the human scale. And the depth of time is so great over which this process has been happening. That is definitely of the divine. Our own star will die too, but in about five billion years. Our sun lit up about five billion years ago. It's got another five billion years to go of hydrogen squeezing into helium. But in five billion years, it's gonna use up that hydrogen in its core, it'll all be helium. And at that point, it undergoes a major metamorphosis. It will start squeezing the helium into carbon, the very atom of life. So our sun will eventually, before it dies, create the atom of life. When I'm working with kids, I do Montessori classrooms, Unitarian Universalist summer camps and religious education. I'll ask the kids, I'll say, do you think it is a good thing or a bad thing that our own star, the sun, will also die? And then I let them just discuss it. I can think of no better way to start discussing death than through this understanding of stars. Discussing it before it hits a child in an emotional way, when a pet dies or a grandparent dies or worse, a parent or a friend dies. Some of the kids will say, it's a good thing, because if stars never died, there would, wouldn't be any planets. And if there aren't any planets, there can't be any life. A lot of kids, they're so trained by what they do five days during the week, are looking for, what does the teacher want to hear? This is the A students, right? This is what the teacher wants to hear. I hope they feel that as well. But there are other responses, too. It's not a good thing for the animals and people alive when the sun dies. But isn't that great? Whoever this is, is has this empathy, developing the empathy for who is there in the future. Always a trekker in the crowd. It will be okay. By then, people will be able to move to planets around other stars. When our star gets ready to die, we'll just go move to another one. And we'll take the DNA of the other creatures so that they can move too. It's not a good thing for the families of stars. You see, this child has already experienced that. This was a boy that said that, and I swear, five seconds later, there was another boy in the class who just popped up with this. Stars don't have families. <laughs> see that mystical, the empathy, and yet that concrete literalism that comes in with early childhood as well, with elementary age. I'll also ask the kids, I'll say, does anyone have a grandparent who has already become an ancestor? I will never say passed away. I will say died, or once I've introduced this understanding, it's not just that they've died, passed away, they've become something, they've transformed, they've become an ancestor. I had one boy say, my grandmother became an ancestor on January 26, 2004. He was proud to raise his hand and say that. Nothing wrong with talking about it.
There are ancestors in the night sky. There are ancestors in the night sky. When we look and say the names of stars today, there are ancestors in the night sky. There is stardust here in you and me. There is stardust here in you and me. When we learn how stars made much of what we are, there, there is stardust, stardust here in you and me. There is stardust in Earth's atmosphere. There is stardust in Earth's atmosphere. When we breathe oxygen, we take the stardust in. There, there is stardust in Earth's atmosphere. There are dying stars recycling now. There are dying stars recycling now. By saving soda cans, we join the cosmic plan. There, there are dying, dying stars recycling now.